This is ENP Reports, a service of editor and publisher magazine. Since 1884, the authoritative voice of news publishing. And greetings once again, Mike Blinder, publisher of ENP. And today we're talking Epis. I, I hope you're familiar with them since they've been around since 1996, as editor and publisher magazine was one of the first to salute digital excellence. Imagine that back in 1996. And for the last 25 years, many prestigious organizations have epis now that uh, on their walls or, or, or trophy cases like CNN, like Fox News, like NBC, CBS, the Weather Channel, um, Financial Times, but a lot of small newspapers and colleges and universities also have achieved the prominence of an Epi Award. We've expanded them this year and partnered with the Local Media Consortium, whose president is Chris Hendricks. Now, Chris goes way back in the industry as well, one of the founders of Cars.com, 18 years at McClatchy as a digital pioneer in our industry. He even won the NAA Digital Pioneer Award. And Chris this year has partnered with us to be head of our judging. So I wanted to do a quick interview with Chris and talk about the importance of the Epis, what they can mean for a small, medium, or large news publisher, and how colleges, universities, and broadcasters can also join us today and help be recognized and share their best practices with the industry as a whole. So join me for a quick ENP reports as I go one on one with LMC president Chris Hendricks. Mr. Hendricks, thank you so much for being part of ENP reports today. I see we have you at home today. Is that right? I've been at home for a long time. I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book about people's living rooms and bedrooms and kitchens because of half of our interviews now and your background art, you're only showing us a little bit of that. What this is, this is for those that are watching on vid, on uh, YouTube. Those of you that are on Stitcher or what have you, I apologize, but what is this? It's a bird. It's a bird. It yeah. See this now, fun, my wife selected. And this fun is, uh, facts to know and tell that Chris Hendricks has has a, a bird in his living room or office or wherever you are now, sir. My office. We're yeah. here to talk Epi's. Epi's been around for decades. Um, ENP was one of the first to recognize um, digital excellence. Mm -hmm. uh, my first question is: You've won Epi awards in the past in your different um, positions. Yes, eons ago. Eons ago. Let me let me see what I can dig up here. Hold on one second. All right, well, Chris. This for those of you on, I'm on, on far. I'm only, right, for those of you on here. iTunes or Stitcher, Chris has just left his desk me. for a moment. And he's going to pull out an Epi Award. There you go. Two of them. Oh, my word. They're bigger now. And I, yeah, well, you know, they're probably made of gold now, too. And past winners have been pretty prestigious, as you likely know. We have CNN won last year. Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, NBC, CBS win last year, Weather Channel. But we also have small publishers as well. Um, That's probably the best categories to, that I like to look at, the small ones. The big tell ones me why. Well, because the big ones are resourced well enough to avail themselves of all sorts of, you know, uh, market leading and best solutions when they don't have, they have lots more resources and they're not as scrappy. So you, that's why I like that. I like that word scrappy. Scrappy, mm -hmm. I, I call it street fighting when you're just working that's with whatever you got, you got to get out there. Um, you will be helping this year and thank you. I mean, I needed some help because, you know, we're lean and mean here at EMP like every other publisher out there in today's world. And you're going to be in charge of our judging, working with the judges we've selected. We've got a panel of about 22. We're down to the wire now where all our epi entries are coming in. Um, we have, I, 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 what I did was I, I did what they did from the previous owner, which is cut the line at 1 million page views over, that's the big dogs, 1 million less. I hope you're comfortable mm -hmm. with that as the demarcation for how we're going to um, judge the big dogs versus the small dogs. If I, I think for, you know, given we're working in real time here, yes, it works for now, but I think, you know, we may want to look at the future of, of um, unique visitors or some sort of uh, individual type of um, measurement as opposed to simply taking page views as a proxy for success. Let's talk about a small guy. Um, let's assume mm -hmm. someone's like listening or viewing with us right now from a a smaller market, as you say, a scrappy guy mm -hmm. who's, who's working with a limited team, possibly a vendor offsite, doesn't have a lot of digital resources, but truly believes the platform or the content they've published deserves recognition. Do you urge them to, uh, 
to uh, enter? We'll be Absolutely. I mean, there's a tendency, and I've talked to lots of the smaller um, associations recently, yes. as part of my work with the LMC and also just work of the heart. And many of them um, don't think they're well enough along as far as digital transformation is concerned. I don't know that that's true because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you don't believe you're good enough, you'll never step into the realm of the editor and publisher awards, Epi Award. I think anyone who's doing anything online who should take pride in their work and, and go ahead and say, listen, we're trying here. Let, show, let us show you what we've learned. Um, there's a tendency to think that the large businesses, the large publishers are the ones who have all the solutions and have all the, 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 the corner of the market on uh, bright ideas when that's probably not true and the record shows it's not. But I think a lot of people self-select themselves out when they should be just saying, look, we're doing good work. We're doing hard work. And if, if we're recognized, that's great. If we're not, at least our story is being told. And exactly. Um, it doesn't have to be an attractive page with lots and bells and whistles to get the recognition that the EPIs offer. It could be based on the content you're generating digitally. Um, and I, I can't stress that enough. I think people think just because I'm using like a town news to do a story does not necessarily mean it's cutting edge. Correct? I mean. Correct. Uh, uh, the 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 best icing in a cake doesn't uh, make the cake a bad cake good. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tweet that puppy. <laughs> that's that's right. not bad. I mean, Words right. of wisdom from the great Christian Hendricks, uh, president of LMC. Um, you're you're correct though. Um, so first of all, let's 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 reaffirm this. Uh, we're down to the wire to get your submissions in for EPIs. Chris is going to be looking over those submissions with our panel of judges. And even the smallest newspapers could be recognized. And this is, I think, the key. Winning an EPI is not just ego. It's, it's showing a best practice that we can share through E&P to other scrappers. Can I use your term? That's exactly right. Yeah. That's perfect. That's exactly right. It's recognition that can be shared with others who can steal the idea in a sense. Why not? I mean, what EPIs, in my opinion, are is a recognition of best practices mm -hmm. in a digital world. Now, the other thing we did this year was expand the, the um, uh, categories for universities and colleges. And this is why I reached out to you and LMC, because you've built some form of a relationship there. At least that's what you're, um, I know, have you ever heard of a woman named Christina Hendricks, I'm not sure. She's, Christine Hendricks? Christine yes. Hendricks, yeah, she's yeah. your daughter. She, she's the executive, she's kind of running the show. She's the one that said to me, we have a good relationship in that world. Tell us more of how this message is getting funneled through. Well, we started um, last year where we decided we were going to, one, um, provide scholarships, the DEI scholarships, diversity, equity, and inclusion scholarships uh, for journalists and also the business side of journalism, the business of journalism. and. Uh, started at reaching out to colleges and universities and it wasn't just DEI it was you know anybody who's really in the field but with a, a, a tendency towards DEI and building bridges to those colleges and universities around um, some a path to the the greater good of the industry which the LMC is about that's more efficient so they could find us so we've awarded um, five scholarships of $2,500 for, for four years um, there are parameters around it, and each year we'll layer another five scholarships on top of that. But that allowed us to reach out to the universities and start talking to them about what the LMC does and how we are supportive of journalism from all the way from the, the street on all the way up to the big corporations. And along the way, that includes universities and colleges. So we now have actually have a category of membership that is for university students who may want to join the LMC and be involved in the thought leadership as well as the organization itself. And the fee for that is free. So university professors and university students, as long as you have a .edu address, um, you're welcome to join the LMC. Let's, I think I jumped too quickly into EPIs because that's the editor and publisher side. You are the president of LMC, Local Media Consortium. And for someone who has not heard of you, shame on you. <laughs> You've really advanced in a very short period of time. I remember when you first started presenting the concept to the industry. Why don't you give us a quick uh, overview of the benefit of LMC and what it truly does for the news publishing industry. Right. The Local Media Consortium is a collective of a little bit more than 90 news, news companies, I shouldn't say newspapers, right. and news, local news publishers. Um, it includes broadcast television, newspapers, digital only publication, radio, a nonprofit with a, a bend towards you have to write and produce local news. <clears throat> so we work together collectively 
to leverage the size, which is, um, as I said, 90 plus companies owning more than 4,500 local media outlets, we work together collectively to leverage that scale for conversations with platforms, large sure. providers of services, strategic initiatives that we work on together, um, as well as cost savings and revenue driving opportunities. Uh, the size is pretty formidable from a digital standpoint. We focus only on digital. We don't service the print side or the, the terrestrial side of the business. We it's really digital. Uh, the footprint is about 195 million unique visitors per month, and that's a Comscore number. So it's very sizable and allows us to have conversations in the senior level of um, Google, for example, Facebook, for example. Uh, those, and it goes on and on the list of partners that we have. And what we do is the deals are the same deal for every member. And every member has one vote, regardless of size. So when we craft the deal, the benefit is that these are deals that not one company could get on their own. And because of the benefit and the ease of access for the service provider, they give us discounts on their services or they show us revenue opportunities that we wouldn't get as um, individual companies. You and so I we've both, been around for a while. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really interesting to, you know, when you think back on the industry 20 years ago, uh, the idea of broadcasters working with television, I mean, with radio stations and working with newspapers was, you know, that was heretical at the time. But today, um, these are all companies that work together collectively. One of the bigger initiatives that we've had strategically that we've worked on has been things like uh, privacy. We worked on that together. And recently you saw the announcement of the matchup. Exactly. And I could go on, but um, yeah. So it is a, a pretty a sizable organization. It grew fast, but it recognized the need for consolidated power amongst us as we kind of deal with um, the transformation and transition to digital. I remember when you and I both shared a stage at California Press Association in some wine country. We were up in the, uh, Napa, in, yes. the Napa Valley, and your speech was before mine, but you said the word scale four or five times for a reason. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're even letting the smaller news publishers have the same benefits as the larger deal guys and giving easier access to their R&D partners of the industry. Do they have that correct? That's correct. That's absolutely but, correct. But it's not, see, this is the thing. Some people think LMC, they think it's all about geeky, nerdy stuff. It's to advance news publishing, correct? That's correct. That's exactly right. So the roots are still in what we do, which is generate content. I define news publishing three ways. Someone who has to generate content, find an audience for it, and then make money from it, monetize it, whether it's through contribution, whether it's through advertising, whatever. And LMC gives a, a clear, easy way to explore all the partners that are out there. And one of the things I've also noticed in a COVID world is people are outsourcing more. Do you agree? They're looking. Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, it just, it's just part of the plan. Um, what I'm also happy is that LMC has decided to partner with ENP on the EPI Awards. That way we can expand our base through your channels. Um, the EPIs have not been broadcast heavy. We've been network heavy. When you look back, just about every major news network has EPIs, but the local broadcasters haven't taken advantage of it. Do you think that's something we might be able to expand this year as well? Well, I think so. I think that was one of the, when we first discussed partnering with you is let's get the broadcasters involved. E&P has traditionally been a, uh, the chronicle of the newspaper industry. Yep. And now it's the chronicle of the news industry starting to branch out into that. And I think it's smart for, for us to do that because it is, as you've seen with the LMC, there is this kind of a um, move towards the center. And there certainly is plenty to cover amongst broadcasters with similar um, news objectives as, as through traditional newspapers. So I think that's right. And, uh, you know, truth be told, they have websites, <laughs> they have digital assets, so do, so do radio stations and, you know, so do the nonprofits. Uh, so, yeah, there's no reason why you shouldn't have those categories. And I think over time, uh, the recognition will be... Um, it will be something that uh, they'll come to uh, enjoy. All right. So, and also, good. and to go back to the, not being necessarily an award, to go back to the fact that not only will they award it, they'll be able to, you know, it shines a light on best practices for them too. There is absolutely nothing wrong with coming off as an industry leader and sharing them with other. This is, the Epis will give you that advantage. I, I, I want to I urge anyone right now that is, that is publishing news content to not take advantage of this forum. It has been around for about 25 years now. It's highly recognized within the industry, but I think it's time to get a broader base. Let's get into that broadcast world. Let's make sure that the smaller markets understand you have just as much of a chance to be recognized and share your talent with the industry as of course the big dogs that have massive resources. 
So the website is epiawards.com. The deadline is August 31st at 12 midnight Eastern time to get your, your entries in. Um, LMC has been a big partner for us and we appreciate that. Is there any final advice you want to give anyone who enters since you've already have two in your office and uh, I would, yeah, the only thing I would say is that don't be shy about it. Um, there's nothing to lose. There really is not. In fact, um, there's nothing wrong with being in third place or even fourth place because your story is being told. And exactly. That's the important thing is that we will catalog this. We will share it. We will tell stories of the Epi Award winners and the entrants for a long time to come. But it provides a database at the smallest level, the database of people who are doing innovative things or, or they believe are innovative, whatever it is, or just ideas. It provides a database which we can share amongst ourselves as local well, news providers. You can go to epiawards.com right now and see every award in every category that goes back to its inception. And you, uh, can you guess the year? Because you and I were in the industry in 1996. Do you remember That's, that? Good old, yeah. I was, um, I was a bit thinner on. then and I was a bit... <laughs> I think it's 1996, as a matter of I, fact. I won no, mine. 1990. This is 1998. I won one in 1998, too, with, um, you remember Portland, Maine Press Herald. When I was, yes. I yes. was stationed up in New England, and it was a big deal for us. We will recognize you, of course, on the website, but we'll also recognize you in E&P. You will be in the magazine, and you will also be part of our, um, our, our massive database as we post your content and what you've done online as well. So, Mr. Hendricks, I'm honored that you will be head of judging this year. Thank you for also helping us become a partner of the local media consortium um, as we uh, take people through the journey of, of recognition through EPIs in 2020. Well, thank you for asking. We're glad to help and we're also glad to be part of the award process. It's just a great thing for EMP and the LNC to come together. So we're just as happy as you. Stay, stay healthy, sir. All right, thank you, Mike. See ya.